Buying bread in the capital can now take hours. As war intensifies, so does the hardship of daily life. This woman waited two hours. Life is difficult? Uh, very, very difficult. At this government bakery, bread is still cheap. At private bakeries, queues are shorter, but prices ten times higher. Fuel shortages are driving up prices. At petrol stations, car queues are so long, people come on foot. One man who wouldn't talk on camera blamed his woes on the West for backing the rebels. The government says there are no rebels in the center of Damascus. But a short distance from the petrol station, the guns on the street are in opposition hands. Abu Hamza says he commands the Free Syrian Army here. He asks us not to film their faces and takes us on a tour of the neighborhood. We're moving through a very large neighborhood in Damascus. The fighters are openly carrying their guns. We're not being stopped by any government security people. The fighters want to show us that they're in control of this area, and they seem to be. In their offices, he insists they can govern as well as fight. He tells me the fighting created a gap in government services, so we had to choose between social chaos or relying on ourselves. There's a soup kitchen. Local women are cooking for the poor. A makeshift detention centre was set up in a local house. And they say they're creating their own justice system. We're taken to see a judge. He doesn't even want his voice heard. Officially, he's still working for the government. Most shops are still shuttered here. Many people have fled. There's been fierce fighting in this area and could be again. All around this neighbourhood, government forces are still in control. But as they wage more strategic battles to keep the capital, some places, even in the heart of this city, are slipping from their grasp. Lise Doucette, BBC News, Damascus.